All right, today we're going to look at a topic that you might see on your end of course exams. It deals with economics. Don't run away. Stay with me. I promise we'll make this interesting. And it deals with money. Dollar dollar bills, y'all, right? Fiscal and monetary policy. What does that mean? All right, we're going to look at this. So you may or may not have heard of something called the Federal Reserve System. And this is um, what the cool kids call the Fed. So if you ever hear that in the news, that's what they're talking about. It was established by Congress in 1913. So this is not something seen in the Constitution. It was created a little bit later. And it is our central banking system. So if you ever wonder how do the banks get their money and where do banks go to borrow money? Well, sometimes they go to the Federal Reserve. This is run by a board of governors. This is not the same as governors of states. So don't get those terms confused. Another one of our, we like to use social studies terms in a confusing way sometimes. Um, seven members are appointed by the president, and one of them is the chairperson, and they serve for a term of 14 years. They, these, these people are supposed to be a little bit more independent from the day-to-day -day politics. They're supposed to be making long-term financial decisions. So Congress does have some oversight over the Federal Reserve, but they do maintain some independence. What is their purpose? The Federal Reserve uses monetary policy. So this is a key term you might see on the state test. Monetary policy is what the Federal Reserve does. Okay, and the, with the main goal is to promote price stability, to try to achieve full employment, maintain economic growth, and uh, pursue other national economic goals. So it's pretty broad power that they have. That whole promote price stability thing right here, that's talking about trying to uh, fight inflation. Uh, depending on your viewpoint of, of the Federal Reserve, you can argue about how successful they've been at achieving some of those goals, but uh, that is their purpose. Now, how do they do this? So we talked about monetary policy, right? This is going to be about uh, adjusting interest rates to try to control inflation, okay? The very, 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 very basic look at this is if they raise the interest rate, that means it's more expensive to borrow money. So this is going to slow the economy down in an attempt to slow down inflation. Inflation is when prices and wages are increasing at a, at a rate that uh, if it goes too fast, starts to make money worth less and less. And so they're trying to control that. So the Federal Reserve has something called the discount rate, which is the interest rate they charge banks when banks want to borrow money. So if they make it more expensive to borrow money, it means that banks are going to make it more expensive when they give out loans, when they are creating loans. So it just makes everything slow down in the economy a bit more because it gets more expensive to borrow money. So for your student loan, your car loan, your home loan, those all become more expensive. You're probably less likely to borrow money. That slows the economy down. The opposite is also true, though. If they cut the interest rate, they are trying to increase economic growth higher economic growth that's not the proper term mr pile um and going for uh, this is going to cause inflation to uh increase possibly okay but broad speaking terms here they cut the interest rate they're trying to speed the economy up could result in some inflation uh, but they're trying to make borrowing cheaper um, example right now in the in the year 2021 interest rates have been pretty low for really the past decade. Um, we haven't seen terrible inflation because of that, but it's been an, uh, uh, the attempt to try to speed the economy up, keep things moving. The higher the rate, the more expensive it is to borrow money. This slows the economy down. And again, why would they ever want to slow the economy? It is if they feel like inflation is getting out of control, then they would need to slow the economy down. But usually it's very politically unpopular to slow the economy down. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on them to keep interest rates low. That's why they have some independence from the political process, because we don't want that to be too influential. All right, so another term you could see is fiscal policy. This is something that Congress does, okay? So monetary policy involves the money supply and interest rates. That's what we were just talking about with the Federal Reserve. It's about how much money is flowing through the economy. If it deals with the Fed, remember it's what the cool kids call the Federal Reserve, then it's monetary policy. Fiscal policy is the more traditional executive legislative branch using tools of government to achieve their economic goals. So this is involving taxing and spending. 
okay? And remember that, that most of that power is given to the legislative branch, specifically the House of Representatives, in that they have the power of the purse. But we have checks and balances in place here because the president has to then sign off on the budget. Questions they're trying to answer there is how much should we tax? How much should we spend? Generally, it's very politically unpopular to raise taxes. But it's also politically unpopular most of the time to cut spending because people want stuff from the government. So what we end up with is a situation where the government today typically spends a lot more money than it takes in in taxes. So that's why we have a deficit each year, which adds to the national debt. Uh, but again, it's politically unpopular to try to raise taxes to pay for those services. So that's why we kind of end up in the, in the boat that we're in. But generally speaking, fiscal policy, this is Congress and the president taxing and spending. Monetary policy is adjusting the interest rates. It's what the Federal Reserve does. So monetary policy, money supply, fiscal policy, taxing and spending, the Fiscar brand of scissors. That's they cut taxes. That's what I was going for there. We'll see if that works. All right, the federal budget. Not anything like you would create in a household budget because the federal budget can run a deficit each year and can keep borrowing money indefinitely. <laughs> uh, That's not how your household budget should work. So the federal budget process reflects separation of powers because the president proposes the budget, but Congress then has to approve it or change it and then send it back to the president to be signed. As I mentioned, Congress has the power of the purse. Some abbreviations you might see in relation to this is the OMB, which is the Office of Management and Budget, which helps the president propose a budget. They come up with estimates for what different things will cost and the impact that it'll have. You also have the Congressional Budget Office, which kind of scores up bills. So when you talk, when they talk about the CBO score, they'll look at a proposed piece of legislation or a new law, and they will decide how much they think that will cost over time. It's supposed to not be political. All right, De differences between debt and deficit. Okay, the national debt is the total amount of money our country owes to creditors. This is not that we owe all this money to China. We do borrow a lot of money from China and other foreign countries, but the national government also borrows money from U.S. citizens and U.S. banks. They issue things called bonds, which are government debt, and people can buy those. You can buy a piece of, of the national debt. And it's usually people are pretty willing to buy U.S. debt because we're very steady and good about paying off our debt. So we have a good credit rating. There's currently over $22 trillion in national debt. You can check it, the national debt. There's a national debt counter that you can go to online to check that number. It increases all the time. So that's just a snapshot in time. The national deficit is the difference between the amount our government spends versus what we take in in revenue through taxes primarily. So the deficit is just that year, what did we spend more than we took in? The 2019 deficit was $984 billion. The 2020 deficit was way, way, way more than that, but that is thanks mostly to the COVID pandemic. 2020 is projected to be the largest ever in dollar terms, and yeah, again, that's, that's mostly because of COVID, so we'll see kind of where that comes from. But the deficit then adds to the national debt each year. That, that deficit gets added to our national debt, okay? But those are the two terms. They're not exactly the same. Now, if you must ask me a question, uh, please reach out to myself or your uh, we are government teaching team if you have questions about this and want to go over anything. Thank you for watching.